Hello, my name is Joshua Fuller, and today I will be teaching about slope fields. Slope fields are visual representations of all the particular solutions of a function, as you can see here. And if that doesn't make any sense, well, hopefully it will by the end of my video. So let's take this derivative here. y prime equals x y. This just means that the, well, this is the derivative. And so when we design a slope field, we are basically making a field of the slopes at each point. And so let me demonstrate. Let's start with an easy point. Zero, zero, the origin. Well, since the x value equals zero and the y value equals zero, we plug it in here. Zero times zero equals zero. So the slope would be zero. Now, if you look at the, this specific derivative, you'll notice that whenever x equals zero or y equals zero, the derivative or slope will equal zero. And these are called equilibrium points, or when you draw them in a line, a line of equilibrium. You always want to find these points first because they are the easiest points to find, and we'll start to give you a basic idea of what your slope field will look like. After that, you can move on to, you know, more points, such as 1, 1, which, if we plug it into this, we would get a slope of 1, simply 1 times 1, 1, 2, which would give us a slope of 2, because it's 1 times 2, and so on. And from that, we can create a slope field. And that's the basic idea of slope fields. It just shows all the particular solutions. What's a particular solution, you might ask? Let me show you. A particular solution is the, the equation of a line that runs through a point, a specific point on the slope field. So the specific point we're looking for here is 0, 1, which is right uh, here. So we're looking for the equation of the line that runs through this point. How we do that is we integrate. We find the antiderivative of this equation to find the function. And so we can turn dy, d, the dy prime into dy over dx. And then we divide by y. We'll multiply by 1 over y, it doesn't matter. And then we can also multiply by um, x, oh, sorry, dx, do, 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 do. and we get dy times 1 over y equals dx times x. And now we integrate. We use the fancy integral sign, and we find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to x squared over 2, which is the antiderivative of x. Plus c. Plus c. Do not forget the plus c. I almost did, but nope, nope, nope. Don't lose points on your quiz. Plus c is very important. That plus c is the constant that gives us all the different particular solutions. In effect, this is what we're solving for, because we already know y, in this case it's 1, and we already know x, which in this case is 0, and so what we're really finding is c, or whatever else, var whatever variable you want to use. So now let's multiply, so I raise all these by e, and we get the absolute value of y equals e x squared over 2. Now we do something funny. Instead of doing plus c, I'm going to do e to the c. And since an exponent is an exponent, if you add it, it's the same as multiplying by the base times the component that you were adding. And the reason I did this is if you look at this, this is still a constant. And so instead of having to solve for it as an exponent, we can just solve for it out here because we can just change it. Let's say sorry, e to the c equals k because we can use whatever variable we want. Now, we still, have the, we still have the same constant. It's 
still a constant and we can still solve for it, then it's in a much more accessible location. And bringing it down also lets us cancel out absolute values. Because it doesn't matter what y equals, because if we were to get rid of these absolute values, we'd have to move a plus or minus over to here. But it doesn't matter because since we don't know what k is, it can be plus or minus anything, and we don't have to worry about it. So, y equals k e to the x squared over 2. Boom. Now, since we know that y equals 1 and x equals 0, you can just solve 0 squared over 2 is 0. e raised to the, one, e raised to the 0 is 1. So 1 equals k times 1. And if you have a calculator out, you can figure that k equals 1. Plug that back into our OG equation over here. y equals 1, because 1 was k, times e, x squared, over 2. And that's the equation of the line at at 0, 1. Easy peasy right and wrong. Welcome to a Ferrarian problem, as I like to call it. Something that is just harder than you would expect it to be. Match the equations with the graphs. So, simple, right? You would think until you realize that these are not derivatives. Well, as we are normally used to working with, these were all derivatives. So, extra step. First, we have to find the derivatives of these equations. Then, we have to match them with graphs, something we also haven't done yet in this video. So, let's just start with number one. y equals sine of x plus cosine of x. So the derivative of the left side is just y prime, so we don't even have to really worry about that. The derivative of sine, cosine x, you all should have memorized this by now. Derivative of cosine, negative sine of x. So now let's go back to the graphs and see if any of them sort of resemble, can give us any hint. And if we look down at number C here, you can sort of see a kind of sinal wave going on there. So let's start with that one first. Let's check it. And how we check it is we plug a point into this uh, derivative and see if it matches the slope at the same point on the graph. So let's start with a really easy point. Zero, zero. And so let's go to the graph, look at zero, zero, boop, and solve for the derivative. Cosine of zero is one, cosine of sine is, uh, I'm sorry, Cosine of 0 is 1 minus the cosine of 0, which is 0. 1 minus 0 equals 1. So here we can look. Yeah, that kind of looks like 1. Let's check the other graphs. This one does not look like 1. This does not look like 1. That does not look like 1. So by checking the point, we can see that the first equation is equal to the C graph. Start with number 2 y equals x cubed. Easier, we should all be able to do this in our sleep by now. 3x squared. But now let's go back and check. Uh-oh. Which of these is that graph? Okay. Well, now we kind of have to think about it. So remember, these are slope fields of the derivatives. And what even is a derivative? It's just the slope of the line of the function. So these should resemble the functions we're looking for. x raised to the third. That kind of looks like this one. So you can stretch your mind. Doesn't look like this one at all. Yeah, maybe this one. Let's check it. Uh, yes. This one, we have to do the math, at the point zero, zero, easy point, this equals zero. Well, issue, all of these, well, this one does not equal zero at that point, so we can eliminate that one. But this one and this one do, and they could both kind of be it. Let's check another point. Let's check a point where they are different. Negative, <coughs> negative two, zero, and negative two, zero. These ones, you can see, the slopes are very different, so it would be very apparent. Which one is? 
So negative 2. This one at negative 2 is 3 times negative 2 squared, which equals 12. Let's check. Well, this does not look, well, this one does not look like 12 at all, but this one does. So, for the second one, it's equal to b. Let's keep going. Third equation, ln y squared. y equals ln of y squared. Okay, again, something we should all have memorized by now. ln of something, the derivative of the thing over the thing. Limited of y equals 2 over y. Now, another special case. 2 over y. This one plug in, if we were to plug in 0, we would get, okay, let's just do that right now, 2 over 0, undefined. In undef and a slope field, undefined is represented by a straight up line. Boom, straight up. Yeah. Number 3 is D. And if we had enough time, we could check number 4, but by process of elimination, we can tell that that one is A. Thank you for listening to my video. Watch my other one on optimization. Have a good night.